Welcome to the Fantasy Source Baseball Podcast. My name is David A. Arnott, sitting here with George Winkler, and today we have a very special episode, as every episode is. Today we're going to be talking about the guys that were in our mock drafts before the season began, and many of us may have even drafted these guys, whether or not they're worth actually picking up again, even though they're struggling out there. So prime example might be, uh, I don't know, Franklin Gutierrez. Just to, he's back just recently with the Mariners, kind of struggling. Uh, do you think that there's any kind of uh, any kind of reason to think that he's going to get back to fantasy relevance? I think with a guy like Gutierrez, he has 25 steals on his resume from last season. So, you know, guys are looking for steals, especially in roto leagues, and it's important not to give up on these guys after three months because we still have three months to go. So. I think for a short-term period, uh, Gutierrez could be a, a worthwhile pickup. Okay, so it basically, principle being, I guess, the last three months count, you know, just as much as the first three months. Absolutely, and, you know, if we come at this with a football mentality where we need something right away and we need it now, then it's really wrong for baseball because it's such a long season that flukes are are more apt to uh, normalize you know statistical anomalies are going to stretch out over six months and they're going to be more normal toward the end of the season so let's not give up on these guys just yet now as someone who actually owns Gutierrez in the fantasy source experts lead uh, my strategy and you can comment on this if you want my strategy has been to just kind of hold him out let him let him work through his problems because I feel fairly comfortable with the guy that I have in his spot instead uh, until he starts hitting, stealing bases, that sort of stuff. Uh, if you're not, if it, for those owners who don't have the luxury of that kind of strategy, where they desperately need either duty errors or a waiver wire picked up to start, do you say what would what advice would you give to somebody who feels like they need to start duty errors or drop him? Well. If that's the case, then you drop him because you need a guy who's going to help you right now. And uh, I would give another example like Orlando Hudson mm -hmm. of San Diego. Um, he's another guy who he has a career high 11 steals already this season. So Bud Black obviously is letting this guy run a little bit more. And he's just come back from an injury, but he, he looks good. He's had three multi-hit games in his last four games. So. I might add, I think that was his second DL stint of the year. Second DL stint of the year. But here's a guy that could, for a short term, you can plug him in and he could help your team. Okay. Anyone else out there that you see that uh, might have been an intriguing pick before the season or, or, or at your draft that at this point may just be sitting on the waiver wire because they've been it's especially disappointing? Uh, Will Venable sticking with San Diego and sticking with the theme of steals, another guy who had 29 steals last year. And he may not help you much in average or with the power, but if the Padres do decide to move Ryan Ludwig in a trade, then uh, Venable, you know, playing time should be plentiful going forward. I mean, he was a guy who was sent down to the minors earlier this year. Yeah. And like I said, some of these guys aren't going to do it for the next three months either. But if you can get one month's worth of good value out of them, you got to just keep at it and keep uh, working. I guess really quickly, other guys in that category might include Sean Fiddens, who it's now been, what, two years that he's completely fallen off the map. Although I do believe he had good steal numbers last year, right? Yeah, that would be the main reason to look at him too. But, yeah, he, he's the guy that... Yeah, I'm not feeling too good about <laughs> no. right now because Adam Kennedy just uh, is giving him problems as far as playing time. So, yeah, Sean Figgins might be a guy to give up on at this point. But, uh, you know, I, I was looking the other day. Juan Uribe hits his first home run in over two months. Yeah. And I just can't, I find it hard to believe that he can go through a streak like that. A guy with, you know, 420 homer seasons on his resume, hit all 24 homers for San Francisco mm -hmm. last year, was a major part of their, their run down the stretch. So I'm keeping kind of an eye on guys like this. Don't forget about them. That's kind of the point of today is don't forget about these guys. I think maybe the most intriguing guy that's on your list is a guy on the Detroit Tigers, Madly Ordonez. Uh, I remember looking at the Zips projections before the season and being absolutely shocked to see him uh, projected to hit over 300 on the season. And there weren't that many guys uh, at, in that system that were projected to hit that well. And yet, Madlio has been absolutely awful this year. But 
there is reason to think perhaps that, you know what, he was just hurt. He's been on the DL. He's been rested. Whenever he gets back to full strength, even if it's for just the last two months of the season, if you can get vintage Madlio for that, why not? Why not? I mean, and for 300 batting average help off of the waiver wire, that's hard to find. I mean, I remember laughing at myself last year when I picked up Pat Burrell. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it worked out for a while. He, he gave me a good run of home runs, and, and that's just what you're looking for, just chipping away at the categories, especially in Roto Leagues, and just not giving up. It's, we're in a marathon, not a sprint. I guess something that we've mentioned before comes up again today, which is that while it may be more exciting and perhaps even more fun to pick the Desmond Jennings of the world or the Jordan Lyles of the world and the, and the rookies that come up and produce for you, and you had the foresight to get Ike Davis in that year that he came up and he hit better than anybody possibly expected. On the other hand, those old guys that are really boring and everybody knows who they are, <laughs> their stats still count too. Stott Rowland started out hitting 215 or whatever it was before going on the DL, but now he's back. The Reds are a really good offense, especially at home, and he's hitting in the middle of that offense. Yeah, and if you just take it as an approach that you're looking at one category, like with Rowland, I would be RBIs. He's in the middle of a good lineup in a good ballpark. So... That's all I want from Roland. All I want from Ordonez is average. Are you, you know? saying have lower, want, are you saying have lowered expectations? Have lowered expectations. Go into it like that, but but it it all ends up at the end. So just don't give up. All right, George. Thanks for joining us. All right, thank you.